it is 10.55 on Wednesday 20th of March. The NEC Classic Car Show is on Friday. Tomorrow I need to be taking that up there on the trailer so that it can be unloaded by about lunchtime, which means I need to leave here by about nine. The trailer is over there. It has a weedy winch on it, but it's never gonna pull that up. So basically I've got today to get this thing driving. There's a lot to do. We have, oh yeah, also need brakes as well. So we have no brakes, we have no clutch. The clutch has not been tested because the hydraulics never worked. All the cables to reconnect, all the electrics to reconnect, the batteries to fit, the coolant pipes, plumbing the water pump, the radiator. Um, I have to fix some wiring where I accidentally chopped through it with a mini grinder. Um, put some wheels and tires on it. And basically, yeah, there's actually quite a lot to do. So I'm gonna get as far through it as I possibly can um, and just see how it goes. First thing to do is the bulkhead insulation panel final install. I've coated the front side of the bulkhead again with that um, cavity wax um, underbody seal, clear one. Then I've tri trimmed out my remaining um, sound deadening panel and I'm going to stick that on with its self adhesive stick and the um, upholstery trim glue as well which seems to set really fast uh, and is really really good for this sort of thing. It really is chunky foam this, it comes with its own sort of paper backing which you tear off and then behind you've got the um, self adhesive but it's not brilliant at holding it into the tight curves whereas the upholstery tape, or sorry, upholstery glue is really, really good for that. The other one has been on for a few days out in the elements and it's been absolutely fine. So once they're screwed and bolted onto the panel and all the pipes and hoses and that. So they have both had a liberal coating of that um, upholstery stuff. Just gotta wait for it to flash off a bit and go tacking, then I can stick the two together. And there we have one foam covered bulkhead insulation panel. Not new old stock, but custom made. Right, so I'm gonna shove that in the car now. While the glue's going off on those, <clears throat> I remembered that there are some holes to fill on this bulkhead where fittings go through. So these two um, bolts go through to hold the fuse box or some relays or something. So I've put the bolts through and just put a bit of tiger seal around them so that they'll remain watertight. And then while I had the tiger seal out, I remembered that I could probably do with covering a couple of bits down here when I did all that welding. So yeah, while I had it out, I've just tiger sealed a couple of the flanges. Looks messy, but it's gonna be solid. And of course, my usual disclaimer, all of that will be hidden by the time it's got stone chipping over the top of it. But it's just access while it's easy, while the fuel tank's not in there. So um, yeah, next off, uh, I remembered I needed to sort out the brake proportioning valve and brake pipes. So I'm actually running around like Challenge Annika or something. It's starting to set in just how much I've got to do. That's the brake proportioning valve that mounts to the inner wing. My new brake line, one of them will go in here. The other one is for the rear brakes. These two pipes are okay, so I'm just gonna mask them up, clean that off and give it a dusting of silver waterproof paint. Right, that's cleaned up. I'm debating or not whether it even needs paint because it actually looks okay. Um, I'll have a think. I think I might paint it anyway, uh, just for the hell of it. Seems silly not to. Did some speed masking with cling film and gaffer tape. Um, acid etch primer, the HT silver. It didn't need to be high temperature paint, but um, it's all I had in silver. That's the heat shield on the manifold, so I'm going to give that a coat of that as well. Can't remember whether I've explained this in detail before, but this foam I'm using is acoustic foam. It has open cell, which is excellent for absorbing sound, but crap for waterproofing. So all the actual cells that form the bubbles are connected. So um, it's permeable. So if you poured water in the top, it would go all the way through and into the bottom. It will then drain out of the bottom, apart from what's left over by capillary action, which will just hold and sit there. 
So that's not great to have against your bulkhead and that's what Rover had originally um, because they wanted the sound qualities I guess. Um, this side is waterproof so theoretically water should drain away down the bottom and not sit against the bulkhead anyway but to further improve things I'm going to waterproof the top edges using black tape which will then be glued in place because the way these rovers work water runs down the windscreen down the a pillars through these channels then off that shelf and down through the inner wing but of course it runs underneath and then goes down that seam and that's why they all rust out so my rust prevention cures are all of that's covered with the wax oil stuff the back side of that foam is waterproof the top edge will soon be waterproof and ultimately I'm going to make some little uh, rain shields so that water when it comes off rather than going down the shelf onto the foam will go over the front and straight onto the um, wheel wells. So I'm now just going to put a, a tripe of this tape, thick waterproofing tape across the top. You'll never see it, you won't know it's there, but it should um, allow for really good sound insulation with the foam and yet stay waterproof. I've balanced that panel in, but then remembered that you have to get the bonnet release bracket in there and bolt it up before you can actually bolt that, or you know, final fit of that, otherwise you won't be able to get to the bolts. Um, this is a brand new old stock item because the other one had completely seized and was bollocksed. So, uh, really good condition, just needs to be um, lubed up, uh, freed off some WD-40 and then a whole load of grease stuck on it. As is usual, everything is taken about four times as long as I had anticipated. Everything is in that needs to be in. The only thing I haven't got is the little bobbin that goes in there that holds the end of the bonnet release cable. I'll have to dig one out when I get home. Um, this bar goes across the top and holds the two panels on. And then fitted onto the bar are these hook things. Um, I was going to paint them up, but I've now got a more cunning plan. So these are the hooks, they have tarnished, and I was going to paint them up, but the paint is super bright and it just looks a bit council, a bit tacky. Um, so I was going to paint them gloss black, but that doesn't look right either, and it just shows up all the imperfections. So what I'm doing is covering them in heat shrink, which um, will give it a matte up finish, it won't look out of place. There are some other brackets in and around the engine bay that are done in a similar sort of plastic coating. So I'm just using normal heat shrink, straighten that out so I can slide it on with the help of some WD-40 and then um, get some heat on it afterwards and it should look good. Happy with those, look nice, factory OEM fresh. Right, it's now 20 past one. <clears throat> Progress is very, very slow indeed. Um, do have both bulkhead insulation panels in, fastened up, everything secured and buttoned down. Some of this is quite difficult to do by yourself because you need one hand on the back side of the bulkhead, one side on the front side, uh, or one hand on the front side, so a bit of a pain. Still so much to do. Um, I'm going to go and get a coffee now. I still haven't actually had any breakfast, so that's not good, but I'm um, going to get the brake servo in, clutch master, brake proportioning valve, brake lines, everything at the back side, then start uh, routing the wiring properly and the header tank and stuff working my way forwards I think. Next step, brake servo. This is one out of my spares collection. I think it's a good one. There's no significant rust on it. I'm just going to clean it up. Um, I was going to do a like full-on respray but I quite like the fact it's got the original label and this car is never going to look minty new so I might just brush it down, make it look as good as possible, maybe dust a tiny bit of paint on it, but keep the label and I'm not going to sand it back to bare metal or anything like that. Brake servo is in. That was a complete mission and I've smashed up my paint down there trying to get it in, which is really annoying, but unfortunately that's just the way it is. So I'll rust protect that and paint it. Again, this is a bit of a disclaimer. You won't see it because everything covers this area. Um, these are my new brake master cylinder, clutch hose, clutch slave. I thought, and I was 100% sure, that I'd bought a new master cylinder as well. I can't find it, which is annoying. I've looked everywhere for the clutch master cylinder. I still can't find it. Um, I said I was 100% sure I did buy one, but I've also found that I bought a rebuild kit. 
So it's possible I never ordered one, in which case I've wasted about half an hour looking for something that was never there. So what I'm going to do is take apart the old one, clean it up, that's the seal. There's another rubbery seal at that end. And then fit these new ones. Put it all back together, put it in the car, and hopefully we have a clutch. So these are all the bits laid out. That's the push rod that goes to the pedal, which has its cover boot. We have a new cover boot there. New and old uh, clips for holding the push rod into the end of the master cylinder itself. Then we have this tiny little seal and that um, spring washer. They sit against the back of that between here and here. I don't know what they actually do. It might be a check valve. Some hydraulic devices, imagine you pushed your foot and uh, on the pedal and there wasn't sufficient travel on this lot to push enough fluid onto your clutch slave to actually move the fork. If you pumped it, some things, some devices have a check valve which suck fluid in. Um, I don't think that's what's going on here. To be quite honest, I don't really understand it. I'm just replacing like for like. That's the washer for the um, filler cap goes there. Then we have the main seal, which is that one. And then this thing, which I haven't worked out where it goes yet, but I think it's on the end of that. So I'm gonna clean it all up in panel wipe or um, brake cleaner and then put it all back together again. Right, a bit of a conundrum. Most of this was relatively straightforward. That rubbery thing replaced the rubbery thing there. That springy thing replaced that springy thing there. That main seal, replaced that main seal there. What is getting me slightly confused is Rimmer Brothers, who supplied this kit, that's their part number, also supplied this. But there's nothing in the old master cylinder that looks like that. Um, all of this fits together nicely as is, so I'm taking it that that bit you don't need. It's the same diameter as that, so whether it's a secondary wiper seal to go in here, I don't know. But why you would bother putting that in the kit when the primary one was already the right size, I don't know. So I'm going to put it together like that, because it seems right to me, and that's what was on it when I took it apart. Um, and then if I do have problems, the worst is that I have to take it apart again and um, change it. So anyway, if you know the answer, please answer us on the postcard. Just um, post it up on the YouTube comments or on Retro Rides or wherever you're seeing this video because um, I'd appreciate it if anyone knows. And also if you know whether that is some sort of check valve or whether it's, I don't think it can be a check valve. I think perhaps it's some kind of damper. So if you take your foot off the clutch quick, it doesn't just sort of hammer in there. I don't know. But if you do, write up. Thanks. Before I put it all back together again, I'm just going to lube it all up with some clean brake fluid um, so that it'll go back into that bore nicely. Incidentally, I have cleaned the inside of that out with um, panel wipe and brake cleaners. Just to satisfy myself that this was okay, I filled it with brake fluid and then I've been working it backwards and forwards. Um, seems to work fine. I removed the boot off the front. There's absolutely no signs of leakage. So. I think that that is all good, so I'm going to shove it in the car now. One thing I'm doing to this car, which is not standard, is this Goodridge clutch line. Basically, on these cars, um, clutch master cylinder sits up here, clutch slave is down there, and originally you would have had a hard steel pipe that went all the way down to a bracket, and then to a kind of damper thing, which is that. Don't truly understand what it does. I think it damps out um, sort of feedback from the clutch fork, but I don't need that. Um, and, so and all of my metal pipes are corroded, so I'm just doing away with it and fitting a stainless line all the way between the two. So the stainless line comes with its own little adapter port which goes in there, which has a copper washer, and then the really bent end, like acute angle reflex but that will come off this side and I'm going to run it so that it will come up and over and past my servo keeping it away from the exhaust and the turbo as much as possible and then I'll run it down the wing to the subframe then to the slave. 
So I've got that into approximate position um, and I'm happy with the routing, or I'm going to be happy with the routing after a bit of titivating. The union is done up really tight into the master cylinder with this hose still flexible, so if I do need to adjust it, I can. Uh, I'm fitting everything with a washer, a plain nut and a locking washer because if I was using nylocks, this would basically be impossible to do single-handed or by yourself but because it's a plain nut um, I can get all this on there and wind it up with my fingers and then hopefully I can wedge a screw a um, spanner in the other side and nip it up from this side with a socket so we have the old clutch slave cylinder new or refurbished one not by me bought it from Rimmer Brothers again new push rod for the clutch fork and then we have our damper assembly and bracket and that's the old pipe which is corroded to nothing which I'm binning so I'm going to bolt this into the car then um, work out the nice routing for that stainless wire down to here and then bolt that in well I don't know what Carl Rimmer Brothers intended this for but damn that is a long hose. Um, there's so much like spare, I don't know what to do with it really. I've made the routing as long as I can within reason. <clears throat> so it comes all the way down here and you know I can route it around here however, however I like but there's still going to be a lot of excess. I know you can shorten these yourself so I might come back. Um, and dismantle that hose, shorten it, and then put it back together again. But I won't have time to do that today, nor will I have time to actually P clip this into position. This is a very temporary um, install just to get it moving. I mean, if you think about when this project started, my first intention was to just get it running and driving just to check all the mechanics of it. And it was only when I tried to bleed the clutch that I realized that A, the clutch master cylinder was completely goosed and B, where it bolted to the bulkhead was basically missing. So it's been, what, four months of fanning around, welding, just to get back to kind of a stage I was at when I bought it, which is odd, but that's the way it goes sometimes. So all the hydraulics are plumbed in. I'm gonna need a glamorous assistant or someone to come and help me bleed them while I'm waiting for people to finish work upstairs and become available for helping me bleed stuff I'm going to carry on installing bits and pieces around the engine bay I think next I'm going to bolt the rad in properly and then um, terminate all the wiring fix the wiring over there while I chop through it and then just do whatever needs doing well to the eye it doesn't look like I've achieved much but I have because I've basically been all the way through these fans and adjusted them so that they both spin without hitting anything and they're all nicely mounted and I've put copper slip in all of these sort of captive threads so they shouldn't shear off if they ever need to come apart again. Going back to the water pump, I've revised all of my pictures and I can't see any like um, any of them that show this spacer in there. So. I don't know what it is for, but I'm not using it because it just ruins everything and nothing lines up correctly. So keyway is in, that's going to go back on there, and then I can bolt it all together. And it all aligns down there perfectly. I'm getting paranoid about time now, so I'm doing less filming, more working. Got the belts on, got that front brackety thing on, got the bracket for the air box and the um, fuel filter on. This is my new fuel, fuel filter. You're probably meant to pre-fill it like you do an oil filter, I don't know, but um, because it's a manual pump one I can do that myself and bleed it myself so I'm not going to bother pre-filling it because basically I haven't bought any diesel yet. So i um, just going to swap that over and then carry on. It's starting to get a bit dark uh, an ominous rainy looking clouds. It's actually 5.30 now. It doesn't actually look like I've achieved a great deal and yet I've been working on this non-stop since about, was it 11 o'clock, half 10 or something? Um, 
been preparing the fuel tank to go back in. I bought a pair of brand new stainless steel Jubilee clips for the filler neck. I'm going to slide it under there now and then lift it up with the trolley jack and a piece of wood to hold it into place. Then I can um, get the bolts in. Had a bit of a fail. You know my nice shiny new chassis rail end which I was very proud of. <coughs> well, it's causing a bit of a problem. Basically, the fuel tank won't quite clear it. So, I can get three of the bolts in. But the one this side, if I try and do it up, it stresses the tank a bit because it's bearing on that. So what I'll need to do is when I've got more time, drop the tank again and either massage the leading edge of the tank or chop a bit out of here, hammer it forward and then weld it back together again. Very annoying, but you know, that's the sort of thing that happens when you um, don't trial fit parts. So really what I should have done is put the tank in and out a few times to double check, but you know, you live and learn. Right, it is now, I think about six o'clock, maybe slightly later. Fuel tank is in, um, all connected up. I still haven't got it seated perfectly, but it's better than it was. Um, the next step really, right, okay, yeah, it's 20 past, god damn it, 20 to seven. Um, yeah, next thing is the cooling system. So I'm going to go inside, go through my buckets of hoses and start prepping them to go on the car. I think I might also need to dig out the thermostat housing and possibly paint it black because I might have forgotten to do that. Right, so I've cleaned up the hoses, been through my collection of clips to find the right ones that I need. There has not been much progress out of here, it's now 20 to 9. Largely, uh, the last couple of hours have been spent unloading another diesel engine and a whole load of other spares that um, a chap called Colin has very kindly um, supplied me with. That took a while to unload and to sort through. So I'm going to just carry on doing what I was doing before. That sounded interesting. Don't know what that was, something breaking in the skip. Um, so yeah, that's the plan. It's ten past ten. Um, I have done some of the plumbing, including header tank, brackets, bits and pieces like that, a couple of the hoses. I've balanced the headlights in and loosely attached the front bumper. All of that will have to come off to be realigned properly, but it's just really a way of transporting things now and at least making it look more like a whole car. Uh, I've reinserted the front struts so they're mounted at the tops. Um, I'm very, very tired now because I've been on this all day. I haven't got anyone to help me do the clutch or the brakes so I kind of am recognizing that this is gonna be not driving but at least will be there I'm gonna have a really good tidy up now of this pretty much bomb site and as I'm doing that sort all the bits and pieces that I need to take with me then I'm gonna put it back on its wheels put it on the ground try by myself to push it forwards and backwards up there then I might have a think about whether it's feasible for me by myself to try and load it onto the trailer just by rolling it and using the handbrake. The danger of that is that I get it beached halfway and then I need to disconnect my tow car to get it home. So, I'm sorry, to get home myself. I don't want to leave the car half on, half off a trailer overnight because that's just dumb. So uh, I think what I'll do is tidy up first and then um, be realistic. I think about what I can achieve by myself and what I'm going to have to do with the help of other people tomorrow morning. Well, it's not exactly been a great success. Um, car isn't running, the brakes and the clutch aren't bled up. A lot of it is just balanced in position, uh, but that's because really to do it properly I need to either paint stuff or um, fettle it so there's no point me bolting stuff in permanently at this stage uh, I'm out of energy I think it's about 11 quarter past and uh, there's no way I'm gonna get that on the trailer by myself so I've decided to pack up go home get a good night's sleep come in reasonably early 
get it on its wheels and um, hope there's someone around to help give me a push up onto the trailer. If not, then I'll have to check how good the handbrake is, roll it down that hill and hopefully manage to stop it before I pile into the back of my own car. But that's fun for tomorrow. I'm going to bed.